rocking out with um, our pals Chill. We have Ian, Ben, and uh, let's see, uh, Nick. Yeah. Uh, very nice to see you guys. Nick was um, last week. Yeah. I forgot. <laughs> yep. Sorry. I know. Kind of ironic. Like needs, the most important it. quote unquote oh, member oh, oh. of the oh. band. <laughs> I would <laughs> say so. Yeah. Hey, careful there. Hey, oh. no, Anyways, today is the very Sorry. chilly day of January 25th. And uh, we have some exciting things. You guys just released a new song, and we'll definitely be getting to that towards the end. But um, enough chatter for me. Let's just let's jump into it with Lionhearted. Let's do it. <laughs> Strong start. Um, so Lionhearted is one of your guys' not oldest songs, but definitely one of your more uh, more popular songs. I know we played oh, a lot definitely. here. Yeah, at the alternation. Um, so it's and it's just kind of unique because it's more I don't want to say upbeat, but it's definitely um, I guess yeah, upbeat is really just like the right the right word to use. Oh yeah. Um, and it's different from a lot of your guys' other stuff. And so this is off of uh, let's see, No Sleep No Silence, right? Yes. Correct. Yeah, 2016. So yeah. this is kind of like the album where you guys really start to use like type like EDM type like yeah. oh backtracks. Yeah. This was our 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 first step into this new like world, new direction that we kind of went into. Yeah. Right? Oh yeah. 
Yeah, because I know like your past two EPs and albums and singles and stuff are, are all are like a little more traditional, I guess. Pop so punk. what? Uh, yeah, yeah, pop punk. punk. Right. <laughs> so what guy? Like, what drove you guys to want to use these types of, you know, influences? I think a lot of it too <laughs> was uh, we had just written so many songs in a certain style that we were almost just looking for different ways to branch out and really kind of stretch ourselves. So we pulled from different kinds of music that we had all listened to and been around and really tried to define our own sound versus uh, just diving in and being like another pop punk band. We really wanted to carve out our own lane. Right, yeah. Um, so like I said, this is definitely one of one of your guys' more, more popular songs. And uh, I was just wondering, like you guys play it so often. Yeah. Like, do you guys ever just get tired of it? Like, do you want to uh, change? No. Nah. No? No, not, not. Well, I mean, sometimes you go through like, you know, you, you've done a bunch of practices and you haven't really played a show and you're just like, okay, we have to play this song again. But then once you go out and play it to like a new group of people, oh yeah, it's like it's, it's, so it's like it's different. It, like it's it it does hasn't won't get old. Mm. Every room is like a totally different vibe. So every time you play that song out live, it's uh, a lot different than just being in the rehearsal space. And <laughs> right. it's like it's one thing. I actually just said this at practice the other day. We were practicing a cover song a bunch. I was like, I don't want to play that song anymore. And, then, and Ben was like, why? He was like, I like playing our own songs better. So like playing your own songs is a lot different than just playing songs. Yeah. I feel, uh, yeah, playing our own songs. It's kind of like your baby almost. Yeah. It's like you just want to <laughs> take care of it. Um, so that's actually, that's actually a good segue. So you are not an original member, right? Uh, at this point, like. <laughs> I mean, pretty much, but yeah. you, you didn't start off with. No. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. When Chill, when Chill started, Ben mm. was 11? Yeah, I was like 12, 13, something like that. All right, okay. Yeah, I was, I was like been in 7th or 8th grade. Been around, yeah, right. Exactly. Gotcha. No, but Ian's been with us since we did our like first CD release, so like once Chill was like officially a thing, it's yeah. been the same, you know, okay. three. Like the first CD release. Exactly, yeah. Fair enough. All right, I'll, I'll consider you an original member then. So <laughs> the gold star. Yeah. <laughs> I, was a, I, was a fan of, I was a fan of Chill before. Okay. Seventh grade oh yeah. fan of seventh grade music. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> Got it. I said heck yeah. <laughs> heck <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Keep it PG thirteen. <laughs> um, so that's actually pretty unusual, you know, having a band for that long oh last yeah. until since middle school. So what drives you guys to just keep going? I, I think at this point it's just like all we know. <laughs> all, all you know is we've been just doing it for it. so long that it's just like uh Every day when you come in or work on something or write something, it's it never feels like you're doing the same thing over and over. So every project feels like you're kind of starting fresh all over again. And uh, you kind of know as you're putting out those songs that each one of those is going to be a totally different project, a totally different set of artists, a whole, like a whole different vibe for the whole thing. Mm, fair enough, yeah. yeah. It's almost like reinventing yourself every two years. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. Just like yep. And just so there's like the big picture, and then there's like the little day to day things, like even like this right now. You know, I was at, I was having just a day, you know, just you wanted the day to be over. It was a horrible day. And then you get to come, like, hang out, you play some music, you talk about it. And oh yeah. you already, I already feel way better. Have <laughs> a stressful sound check, yeah. yeah it's all, it's, all, it's a part check. of the life, yeah, <laughs> for sure. I mean, selling burritos can really just. <laughs> 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 really gets you down, yeah. yeah. Um, so. I guess. I quit so my job one time to come to a show. I just want to really? say that. Really? Hey, I mean, you're either all in or you're all out, really. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. What were you saying? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's okay. Um, so we discussed, like, what makes you guys want to keep going. What made you originally want to start a band in middle school of all times? Uh, I think I remember a lot of hearing, like, bands like Green Day and All American Rejects and Fall Out Boy on the radio, and I was like, I just want to make sounds like that. It wasn't like a... You know, I wanted to go out and like play shows. I just wanted to have like guitar in my hands and be able to play. And then it's just uh, one step at a time. You know, you start playing shows, and then you want to record, and now we're here. Yeah, <laughs> just the evolution, I guess, of, exactly. of yeah. being a musician. Oh. All right. Well, my brother came up to me. That's my brother, by the way. I don't know. Yeah. For those of you who don't know, he was like, "Hey, I'm learning guitar. Uh, do you want to learn how to play drums?" And I was like, oh, no, not at all. So he didn't need a <laughs> pair of drumsticks. And he's like, well, you're going to start learning. All right. I'm assuming that <laughs> you're the younger sibling it. then. Yeah. Yeah, got it. That, that makes sense. Yeah. Well, all right. So 
Lionhearted specifically, the lyrics are pretty interesting because it addresses the general populace, I guess. Yeah. You know, we is used quite often. Mm-hmm. So I guess let's let's dissect these lyrics. Like, what is this all about? Well, if you... If so... You go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so Lionhearted, when we started working on that too, was more of a uh, statement of where we were going as a band. And okay. it was the first song off the new EP as we were changing all the sound and everything. And it was basically saying... Uh, all of us are going to stick together, all the fans are going to stick together, and we're going to put ourselves out there and just do whatever we need to do to be able to uh, kind of take over and like rise up as a band under the context of uh, some 1930s uh, mob thing. And then he, yeah. can, he can talk about how we actually got to the... Well, that was, yeah. that <laughs> was it. So we, were, we did all the instruments for the song, and we were kind of like messing around with like lyric stuff. And then I just remember like walking into the room and I was just like, (laughs) I was like, man, guys, I got like a 19, like 30s gangster kind of vibe. Can we do that? (laughs) And then, yeah, that's, then they they weren't even like, what? It was just like, okay, cool. So, like, no, (laughs) we're going to. The rest is history, yeah. (laughs) Cool, yeah. 1930s gangster vibe. I don't think I've ever heard a pop punk punk band say that. I don't know what I don't know what I was like. (laughs) I was watching like a lot of Breaking Bad at the time, so mm. I was really into like criminal stuff. And yeah, fair enough. I, I think get that. what we really wanted to do with Lionhearted was write a song that everybody in the audience can get behind yeah. and feel yeah. like they're a part of. Yeah. And I think that also, when you consider that that was the third draft of lyrics that we went through, and it was uh, technically more than that, but. I think that reveals how much that we were trying to break into new ground for us. Yeah. So that's also a departure from what we were trying to do. The, w- the we is important. The we is like, it's not only us, but it's like everyone, our people. Everyone, <laughs> everyone who like gives a sh- crap. Yeah, gives a crap. It. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Got it. Okay. They're, they're the we. They're the fire. That's us. <laughs> yeah, not it's just. Yeah. yeah, bro. I get yeah. it. Um, well, I think that's pretty pretty satisfactory for me. I guess yeah. we can let's move on. Let's see what are we what are we gonna be rocking out to next? We got some something to live for, Correct. I believe. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Another song with a music video. Oh yeah. Can yeah. We even talk about the music video. We will. Okay. We will get <laughs> like there. We're building up to the. Like Lionhearted. Oh no. Lionhearted has a video. Go t- look it up. Go check it. Okay. Out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. This song's called Something to Live For. Strangers got to see Maintain a public face And act like a celebrity Put a filter on your face And a heart around your name Everyone will do the same Cause we're all buying what you say Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank you. So, another really interesting song. I feel like all your songs are all super different. It's yeah. really oh. interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We, we, we kind of did that, like, um, not like, we did it on purpose. Yeah. I, I was going to say it, but it sounded like kind of. Yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> we did that on purpose. I don't know <laughs> why. No, but that was kind of the goal. Yeah, right. Because I know, like you said earlier, like, you just want to be diverse. So let's actually talk about music influences, because I know you mentioned like Fall Out Boy and, you know, um, Amer All American Rejects. So what's, I guess currently, let's talk current bands. Like what do you guys enjoy right now? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a tough question. Yeah, I listen to like a bunch of like uh, the 1975 or like Michael Jackson and Prince and stuff like that. Um, it really kind of just depends on the week, too, because uh, anytime like our friends put out music or something like that as well, it's like, all right, that's what I'm listening to for a while. Yeah. <laughs> um, the last album that I haven't or couldn't stop listening to was Lil Peep's new album. <laughs> rest in Yikes. peace. Yikes. <laughs> yeah, rest in but peace. But yeah, I was a huge Lil Peep fan. Hmm. Still am, not was. So not surprisingly, go. I think a lot of our new music at least in the terms of structure and musical organization, as vague as that term is, is influenced by uh, soundtracks from movies, actually. And I'm a big fan of the pianist Udo Vico Ainaudi, and he's cool. <laughs> <laughs> he does really creative stuff, and I've, I've put that as... as Y you may hear it only in the sense that the songs sound different. So here's the cool thing about mm. that question is you see the different like personalities in the band. For oh yeah. sure, the yeah. Different uh, <laughs> some SoundCloud rapper who OD and <laughs> some old like back in Korea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yep. No, we're that. just gonna Sorry. move past that. Um. <laughs> anyways, yeah, I was just about to say the exact same thing. I mean, you have pop punk, kind of alt rock oh yeah. indie type stuff. Uh, rap That's and cool. classical music. I literally would have never expected that. Um, so yeah, it is pretty interesting. So actually, that's a good segue into like, so you guys don't have a bassist, which is interesting. I mean, you Correct. do have rhythm guitar. Yeah. Um, so do you guys do like any collabs with anyone else? Um. No. Uh, so a lot of what happens in the studio too is uh, sitting down. We're kind of writing tracks. It's almost like we don't really care who plays guitar parts or bass parts. I mean, Ben always plays the drums, but... <laughs> uh, it's, like, it's like we're doing something, and then Nick, like, happens to, like, have a guitar, and he's, like... Oh yeah. We're rolling with something. Like, he's gonna play that guitar part, and it could be a lead part that I'm gonna end up playing. Mm -hmm. You know, like, it, it's... It's... Everyone... This is our... Yeah, band. when we're in the studio, it's like everybody's just working. There's no, like, you know, sitting down and be like, oh... Yeah, I like I assigned. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> and, I remember, and I just love playing bass. Like, I love playing bass, so I end up doing bass a lot. Like, and all of our, like, our backing tracks for our live stuff, I just, like, we threw in the bass there. And the recording, I usually do the bass. Mm. Or On something to live for, it's uh, Austin Bello from yeah. Private Seekers Kids playing bass. Okay, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, you did yeah. mention that, um, like, you love listening to the music that your friends release. So who, because yeah. Northeast Ohio is huge, music-wise. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, like, who are your local music friends? I mean, w uh, everybody that we're playing with this weekend from, like, Diamond Kites to Grim Republic and The Waves, uh, they're all people that we've known for a good amount of time, too. So anytime they're putting out stuff, I love, like, John Halling and uh, the outside voices. And I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it really just depends on... Uh, like who we're playing with too. When we're traveling around, it's a whole different set of like local bands from those areas as well. Yeah. I mean, we've played shows with everybody from like As It Is and Cruiser and 
you just dive into their whole thing. Uh, yeah. Yeah, there's a band called Fade Aways. I want to give a shout out to. I'm just I I've only met them like twice, but like I'm Super a really cool big dudes. fan of their music. <laughs> Fade Aways. And like we haven't seen them in a while, but they'll they'll always like hold a special place in our heart <laughs> for the street lights. Yes. They're our homies. Yeah, I'm they're sure we'll see them this summer. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> they're from Hang Indiana. Out. Indiana. Okay, mm-hmm. yeah, semi local. Like, but they're like probably a couple of just random friends. Oh yeah. We played our first like show out of state with those guys and uh in twenty seventeen we went out and did summer shows with them as well too. So mm. in the cops and everything were like Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, they're like our oldest like group of band friends that we still like talk to and everything. They just are kinda doing a different style of music now than we are. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Things things same evolve. P- same people though. Yeah, same people. Not this time. Yeah. <laughs> All right, mad respect for them then. Um, anyways, let's uh, yeah, let's finish off strong with your guys' next song, "Beautiful Mess," yeah. which you just released like yesterday, right? Came out this morning. Today. This today. Oh yeah. Okay, because yeah, I was like, I was scrolling through your guys' music, trying to like memorize all your songs so I knew everything, and you know, as one does, as as an interviewer. And yeah, it was there. Yes, I saw it yesterday on iTunes. It was like 2019. Oh, yeah. oh boy, we have some things to talk about. <laughs> so uh, yeah, let's. Let's jump on into it. She sparks a flame in my brain, ties her tongue to my neck. I can't try. She's in her shade, she's the dark that melts away in morning light. shorter one. Oh yeah. But yeah, it's nice. I like short songs, you know. It's short and sweet. So, like we said, you guys just released this yesterday and you recorded it in today. <laughs> my bad, sorry. And uh, you recorded it in a very cool place. Oh yeah. Liverpool. Yes. So let's talk about this. What drove you or I guess well, boated you, <laughs> flew you? <laughs> yeah, to Liverpool. Yeah, we took the boat. It took too long. All right. That's dang. Why we, that's why we don't have a base boat. <laughs> that makes sense. Lost at sea. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
There's this room over there. It's called Motor Museum, and it's owned, well, it's not owned by us. But yeah, the producer that runs the studio, his name is Al Grubbs, and he actually did uh, uh, That's the Spirit for uh, Bring Me the Horizon, and I he's worked with like a bunch of uh, bands in different genres and everything. So uh, we kind of made the uh, decision that uh, we were going to go and record drums in this room and uh, work with Al, and uh, after what, it took us two or three months to like kind of get everything coordinated and make sure that uh, everything was going to happen, and we were just so lucky that we got to go over there and uh, record. Yeah. yeah. Um, and also, like, the people who had been in that room and like Arctic Monkeys, they're one of my favorite records of theirs. There, um, yeah, Mo Arctic Monkeys was one of my favorite er bands. <laughs> I'm a big fan, so it was just really cool to be in that same room. Yeah, gotcha. Oh yeah. So, uh, so Liverpool, mm -hmm. um, a place that not many people get to go to. Uh, it's kind of a superficial question, but just I just need to know, like, what is like the best part of Liverpool? <laughs> Motor Museum. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a very like blue collar area for the most part too. So it, uh, a lot of our time was spent like going into little like shops or restaurants and stuff like that. Right. Um, there's there's not a ton going on. We were uh, out on this uh, area called uh, Lark Lane by like Sefton Park, and uh, you know we would just stroll around and uh, because the Beatles are from that area too. Yeah, like yeah. people are very interested in musicians, so we got stopped like. I can't even tell you how many times are people asking us what we're doing there. <laughs> but uh, it was a cool area to be in. It's very uh, mellow for the most part. Yeah. And it, uh, it was just like, it was just little things were different. Like, yeah. Just driving on the wrong side of the <laughs> road. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, we got tattoos. Oh, all right. That was cool. cool. Ben was doing like a bunch of drums, and Nick and I were like, Hey, let's go get a tattoo. <laughs> All right. And then, yeah. Then what did you get a tattoo of? Uh, now I feel like I'm talking about Lil Peep too much. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, he had, like, it was right around when he died. Mm. And I was just, like, I just happened to be thinking of it that day. So then, yeah. There we go. One, right. one of his song names is. Okay. Right yeah, there. I personally, I don't think I've ever listened to a single Lil That's Peep song. Shame. So I can't really relate. But it's you know what? <laughs> yeah. I still feel sad that, you know. Whatever. Yeah. Anyways, moving on to happier, happier topics. So we did kind of touch on it <laughs> a little bit earlier. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, did you want to talk about your tattoo? Oh, oh, oh okay. yeah. Sorry, no, my bad. No, good, I thought. Go. I thought. Uh, no, no, I, I no, got. Next. I just got some like little and stupid. So you're you. You <laughs> just got some little stupid. Yeah. Oh, no, what was it? I just. I was got the cheesy like little uh, Union Jack Jesus. tattooed on my wrist. Oh, okay. So I was like, there we yeah, go. Yeah, that is pretty the cheesy. Exactly. And stupid. Classic <laughs> like tourist thing. Yeah. There we go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. It'll be. Did you say you got it on the inside of your lip? Uh, on the oh, wrist. On the, okay. Yeah. On your, oh, sorry. Yeah, no. I'm uh, obviously <laughs> hard of hearing. Yeah, I can't talk um. about stupid tattoos. I've given myself a few <laughs> tattoos with sewing okay. needles. It's a part of life. I have bad news tattooed on my thigh without the S. <laughs> <laughs> bad new? Yikes. Yeah. That is, I think that might be more from cheesy a TV and stupid show. than uh, Union yeah. Jack. <laughs> I think just get rid of the cheesy part and then it's just, <laughs> it's just, just bad. <laughs> yeah. But that's Yikes. like the point, you know? Yeah, it's, it's edgy. It's, it's very it's punk. I am yeah. I am pretty edgy. <laughs> edge edge <laughs> edge lord over here. Techies. Gotcha. Well, uh, let's bring it back to um, <laughs> recording. <Sorry, I> <laughs> no, I it's okay. Stuff a lot. No, it's cool. Um, so we did touch on it a little bit earlier about recording versus doing live shows. But like, what do you guys prefer? Uh, live. Live? Yeah, live, live shows. That's yeah. what I was expecting. Yeah. <laughs> so shows, like, yeah. what is like the difference between the two? It's so different yeah so, so different. when you're recording it's mostly uh a very like creative part of your brain that's working uh it's definitely longer hours as well too i mean it's almost just like 100 percent processing like how are we going to get this done you're writing you're trying to be at 100 percent all the time live shows is more like you kind of hang out all day yeah. you're around all of your like band friends and everything everybody shows up it's way high energy like th it's just a totally yeah, different it's uh, like it's like recording is like that's more like a job but it's a job that you love to do yeah. and then like the shows are like that's the easy part yeah that's like <laughs> the fun part but you're also like you but you're there to do something and that like 
that comes above everything. But as long as you're like rehearsed, everything's set up, everything's good to go, you can just like hang out and have fun. Yeah, oh yeah. just go for it. So, so they're uh, very different, but I think live shows are just like just more fun. relaxed. Yeah, yeah, easier to because you get to share all your music with people. Yeah, it's like a celebration yeah. almost. Yeah. Like, hey, <laughs> come enjoy this thing that I just made. Yeah, I get that. So shows are great and they're really fun. But like, what's like the worst show that you've ever played? Pittsburgh. <laughs> Pittsburgh, yeah. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> there was a there was a show probably two no three years ago, yeah, uh, that we played and like it was right before we were into a uh, recording session, so we we're meeting some of our stuff there from recording, some of our stuff that was with all the live stuff, and uh, we showed up and like half of our stuff wasn't working, oh. which is always a fun thing to deal with. So in the mad scramble of getting everything together, it just kind of like threw us off a little bit. Yeah, and it's like just like one of those like you play okay, not yeah. bad, but there's a big difference between playing okay and like playing great. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and like, yeah, it just wasn't. I feel like we were out of pl- like it wasn't our scene. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's not that they didn't care about us. It's just like we weren't. <laughs> we w- we just shouldn't have been there. Yeah. Just yeah. Uh, just yeah. Never going back to <laughs> that hole. Situation. So would that be like the worst thing that's ever happened to you guys mm. in a show? Oh, in a show? show? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I mean, like for the most part, everything's so like well rehearsed and put together that even if something goes wrong, it pretty smoothly gets resolved. Mm. Um, I mean, we've done everything from like you know knocking mics off stands and kicking drums and everything, and we j- we just kind of know how to yeah breaking guitars. It's like you've been around the block a few times. Oh yeah. Yeah. For sure. I mean, s- y- of course you have to have been <laughs> since middle school. Like, how exactly. can you not? Yeah. yeah no, there was we once a time when I popped the head of my bass drum on this side. <laughs> oh. So you can't kick into it because it just goes straight through. So what I had to do is play with my left foot the other side of my double kick so that it landed <laughs> right next to the hole. Still sounded terrible. Had to play the show using one foot, basically. <laughs> oh, wait. No, I did this. And played like this. Oh, very Terrible. comfortable. Terrible. <laughs> That's a good visual. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> Dang. Well, I guess I think it's a sign then. But I mean, I nothing too yeah. terrible is I happened. want something like crazy to happen just so when that question is asked. Well, I mean, you know? the weirdest right. thing that we ever had happen at a show was after we were unloaded from the show. We we're down in Jeffersonville, Indiana. And uh, while the headlining band was playing, oh, yeah. the cops actually came yeah. in, cleared the whole venue out, took the band off stage. Oh. And uh, I guess one of the band members had, like, some serious death threat against him and his family. So they cleared this whole venue, and we were just standing outside, like, what is going on right it's now? Like <laughs> There's oh these kids God, pouring out of this place. that's a little terrifying, place. yeah. Like it, it, like, sucks for them because the band, they, they weren't even done with their set. Yeah. And we had already played all of our stuff. We had already talked to everyone. All of our stuff was in the van. Yeah. And then they said, show's over. And we're like, oh, okay. Like yeah, <laughs> we were already done. Dang. <laughs> But that's yeah. like sorry for you guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, there's a death threat against yeah. your family. Yeah. Oh boy, yikes. So uh, I guess let's let's bring it back to beautiful mess. So okay. new song, obviously mentioned it like four times now. Um, so what went into the songwriting process? Uh, that song. Two years. Two yeah, years. Yeah, just two about. Years. Yeah, about a year and a half, almost close to two years of different demos of that song. It took a long time for that one to really come together yeah. and be what we wanted it to be. Um, we ran through a bunch of different versions of uh, lyrics and demos and different acoustic stuff. Uh, it really didn't get finalized until we were like, like in like England or leading yeah. right up to it. It's Yeah, because <laughs> like you have the idea I mean, you you obviously have your demos you do at home, and then you have like the idea of what you want it to sound like in the studio here, and then once you get there, then you can actually like bring it out of your brain, and then then it comes to life. So like it's mm-hmm. there, but it's not actually like physically there. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. No. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Like you have like the ideas and the energy to put it out, but you and just have to apply it. Yeah. Because I mean, like the like the the demos only. Yeah, <laughs> really, a demo is just like a rough outline of yeah. like this is basically what the song is. These are kind of going to be the words. These are sort of the melodies. Sort of. Yeah. Well it's like it's like a half baked 
flow from oh the yeah head. that's that's such a good way because then when you get into the studio it's all uh it's all reworked it's just one piece at a time should we change the chords here do we need to restructure this and then you go down and break down the lyrics i mean i think we rewrote most of that song yeah in that two week period we were over there yeah and that w- that song was like one of uh multiple many songs and like a lot didn't get to re- actually didn't get recorded which kind of bums me out cuz like at, w- at one point or at some point you just had to like you just had to pick one you had yeah. to pick <laughs> one yeah. and then like the other one that could be just as good as it you just like mm-hmm. you, you just run out of time yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay well that's actually so we have we have whole back catalog of this whole yeah stuff yeah. waiting wanna. list of things to be made okay so should we be expecting an album or an ep anytime soon so i think uh what the game plan is is through this year to uh keep putting out the singles that we recorded while we were overseas um we'll definitely do one right before the summer show start uh this is kind of just like a thank you to all of our fans for getting us to this point you know, we're going out doing the hometown headliner tomorrow night. Yeah. And uh, it's like, all right, it's a new year. Let's really push forward. We're going after uh, a lot bigger contracts and streaming stuff and everything. So uh, it's just a fresh start all over again. Right. <laughs> all right. Well, I think that pretty much wraps up our time here. Thank you guys so much for coming in. Yeah, it's thank been you for having us. It's been a real fun <laughs> time. Yeah. So uh, like you said, we can catch you tomorrow at, uh, at 8 o'clock at... Um, Akron Musica. Akron Musica. We kind of discussed about the pronunciation of that. Oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 7 o'clock tomorrow night, Akron Musica. Yes, for Hometown Headliner. So, yeah. is yes. I'm assuming there are going to be other people playing there. Yeah, yeah. so. Yeah. Uh, Four bands, Grim Republic and, yeah. <laughs> Grim Republic, Diamond Kites, and uh, the Waves are opening up the show. All right, yeah. Sounds good. So, definitely, definitely be there. Um, so, and again, there's a music video for Beautiful yeah. Mess out. Actually, there's for Beautiful out. Mess. Lionhearted, and s- actually all three songs we played today all have music videos. Okay, yeah. yeah. So, b- uh, Lionhearted, Something to Live For, and Beautiful Mess. Just and to Something to Live to For. We didn't really talk about that. <laughs> That's our take on social media. Oh, yeah. I Sorry, I meant to okay. ask that. But, uh, yeah. When, y- when you see the video, you'll it's pretty. It'll all be revealed. Yeah. You will become enlightened. Yeah. Um, so, anyways, again, thank you guys for coming in. And that pretty much wraps up our time here at the alternation attic session i i'm just gonna <laughs> roll with that title uh so yeah thank you guys for rocking out you can go over to 889 and rock out with the platypus for the request show which ends at six o'clock um so yeah thanks thank you very much yeah. you clap? <laughs> we can clap clapping is appropriate that was a that was a weird ending but i don't know it happened Radio, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like you end the song, and usually there's a pause, and that helps. But then when you end a song and nothing happens, it's just, it's like just, <laughs> it's just kind of awkward. No yeah, like I never know what to say. I don't know if I should yeah. like clap or like so hey, just like one person, <laughs> just like because like it's so awkward. That never happens out in the world. Like nobody ever gets done playing that song for some reason, except for like right here. Yeah, yeah. Like it's like definitely a hard thing to transition into. Yeah. I really don't. I don't know. It'll be a thing that progresses.